The next step, once you have all of the black tones in your portrait filled in, um, is to move on to the next lightest section, which would be the gray areas. Um, now, most of you had uh, posturized your photo to the three levels where you have white, gray, and black tones. Um, but some of you may have taken it further to incorporate more detail, which is great. Um, but it will be an extra step to figure out how to show that value change between um, more values than just the whites, medium tones, and blacks. So if that's you, um, message me or um, send me an email, let me know, and we can talk a little bit more about how to differentiate each of those sections. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and play this time-lapse video so you can see me starting to fill in the gray tones. Um, and remember that each section does need to have value change. So as I'm working, and you can see in that smaller section on the highlight on the cheek, um, it, I started and had that section darker on the outside and then lighter in the middle. But if you're filling in an area like what I'm filling in now, it might be a little bit harder to make it dark on the outside and light in the middle. So you could maybe fade it from right to left or bottom to top. But again, just try to fade that value from dark to light somewhere within each section that you fill in. Um, the other thing I wanna mention with this middle tone area um, is that you do want to make sure that the color you choose or the value that you're adding is slightly lighter than that black section. Um, so orange is just naturally a brighter color than blue. Um, so warm colors are going to be lighter and then cool colors are going to be darker. So blues, greens, um, purples are going to be the darker tones. So those are the colors I would use in the black section. And then the... Um, more of the warm colors are going to be lighter for the highlights or middle tones. So orange, red, and yellow would work great for this next section. Uh, but again, think about the color scheme that you chose and try to fit that with how you're putting together your project. If you're doing everything black and white or everything just one color, that's where you'll want to use more water to keep this section lighter. Um, but as you can see, I'm just going in section by section, looking at my reference picture on the left, and just filling in all of the areas that are gray. Um, and again, each of these areas, I am making sure that one spot's darker, and then I'm fading into a lighter value as I go. So I'm looking at those little details around the eye, um, filling in more with the hair. Remember with watercolor, it does help to go in with water first. If you're working in a larger section, it will help to just blend that color a lot smoother and fill in the area um, quicker. But if you're working in a very small detailed area, that's when I would just use the paint um, without mixing water uh, because that's going to keep that color right where you place it and it's not going to bleed or run anywhere, especially if you're using watercolor, um, acrylic, is same thing though, it just will be a little bit thicker. Now I would definitely um, change paintbrushes too if you're working in a smaller section versus a larger section. So you should have um, larger paintbrushes that you can choose from from your art kit and then smaller ones for these smaller areas to shade in. And you'll notice that as I'm filling in this section with the hair, there are lots of highlights. So I'm just kind of um, going over it once, leaving it kind of streaky where you can still see those white areas. Um, and then I'm going over the section a second time that I want to be darker. So I'm going to kind of fast forward a little bit here so you can see this wrapping up. Um, and actually, I finished that medium tone section. So now what I'm working on is the white areas or the lightest highlight. Now, instead of leaving those completely white, I still want you to go in and add a little bit of shadow or a little bit of color. Um, so this is where you'll mainly use water on your paintbrush and barely grab any color. Um, and if you do grab too much like what I do here, that's when you can just um, add a little bit of water to it and dab it up with your paper towel. Um, but you can see again, I'm just adding a few shadows and I'm actually looking at my reference picture here and not the posturized one, but the actual photo um, that was taken before those edits were put on it. So I'm looking at that picture and just really looking at where some of the shadows are in those lighter areas. 
So around the nose, under the eye. So just look for areas of shadow in those lightest sections that you can start to bring out a little bit. Um, and again, if you did more sections than just the highlights and shadows and gray tones, then that's where it's going to be a little bit trickier where you'll have to uh, kind of keep leveling up with um, more and more water to lighten each section as you go. Um, but go ahead and make sure that your color is slightly lighter than that shadow section and really take your time filling it in, creating value change as you go in each area that you uh, fill in.